The news at noon starts right now. All right, well, it is Wednesday, October 11th. Thank you so much for starting your noon with us. Have you gotten any rain? Oh, yes, lots of rain, and it appears that uh, fall has begun. A second day with clouds. It is nice, at least. We're starting to see a few peaks of blue sky out there on live cam, but it was definitely a damp and dreary start to the day. The morning commute was a little soggy in spots because we had some lingering light rain and a little bit of drizzle pushed across portions of South Central Texas. Now here in San Antonio, we are drying things out, but you can see just off to the east. This is really the only activity that we're monitoring out there on the radar this lunchtime hour. We do have a few light showers specifically in Southern Gonzales, Northern DeWitt County and stretch over to western Lavaca County near Hallettsville as well. Temperatures currently in the upper 60s and low 70s. Now we will see a few more peaks of sunshine, I think, into this afternoon. And just how many peaks of sunshine, that's ultimately going to determine just how warm those temperatures are able to climb later on today. Right now we've got a forecast high point at around 78 degrees. We'll monitor it for you. After that, tomorrow and into Friday, warmer highs in the upper 80s, near 90 expected. Next Next cold front moves in Friday. It's looking like the evening. We'll see drier air move in and fall weather as well this weekend for the annular eclipse. We'll talk all about it and get to the details coming up in just a few. Thank you, Mia. The largest Dia de los Muertos festival in Texas returning to Hemisphere Park. The Day of the Dead tradition celebrates the people who've passed away. Uh, last year, more than 130,000 people attended, but that may be just a fraction of what comes today. Camille Juarez with more people expected this year. What is going to be new there this year, Camelia? Guys, Civic Park, this new space right next to Hemisphere is going to be full of local art vendors, live performances, and a lot of ofrendas. Those are the altars that people make to celebrate their loved ones who have passed away. Now, we spoke to one of the organizers who say this new space will allow for more than 80 altars. Each altar tells the story of someone's life and a family's heritage. The festival will take place here at Hemisphere Saturday and Sunday, October 28th and 29th. They're going to want to wear comfortable shoes because there's a lot of walking. Now, the art director, Jim Mendiola, says he's most excited for the central community altar. If people don't uh, make their own altar, they go online and send a photo of one of the relatives they may have lost. We print that and we put it on this big uh, giant community altar and so over the course of two days it grows and grows people bring flowers other photos so uh, that's the part that's kind of organic and natural Again, Saturday and Sunday, October 28th and 29th, this whole area is going to be full of live performances, local art vendors, and again, lots of those altars offering this. So later today, we, we spoke to a family that is actually making one of the altars this year, and they're telling us how this tradition keeps their family close to their culture. Max, Ursula? It's going to be a great day. As Camelia just said, Dia de los Muertos will be happening October 28th and 29th, actually two days, and you can watch it, all that action, right here on KSAT 12. Coming up on November 1st, it'll be airing at 8 p.m. Developing right now, a man hit and killed by a tow truck. So this is what we know. Police tell us that the tow truck was in the process of hauling away a vehicle in the area of Loop 1604 and Nacogdoches earlier this morning. That's when an encounter the man in the road, the driver unable to stop in time, hit and killed the man uh, pronounced dead at the scene. His name and age not yet released. As of right now, the tow truck driver not facing any charges. Meantime, a uh, two vehicle rollover crash early this morning, but only one driver stuck around for police. Take a look at the scene at 430 this morning on I-37 near South New Braunfels Avenue. The person who was in that overturned car, however, got out and ran away before the police got there. As a result, we do not have a very clear picture of how this crash happened. And what seemed like a high stakes game of hide and seek has gone all wrong for one man. He ended up in jail, but only after being rescued from an especially tight space. Katrina Weber reports police believe he had burglar in mind, but his attempt to use Santa's favorite route out did not work out. 
San Antonio police officers take a moment to process what had to be a big surprise. They knew they were looking for a burglary suspect in this neighborhood not far from Judson and Stahl Roads, only never dreamed where they'd find him. Officers searched high and low inside this home on Boulder Pass until they found him wedged inside a wall near the chimney after nine last night. They believe 33-year-old Ethan Thomas had broken in about four hours earlier then tried to hide. According to police, no one was home at the time of the original break in, but someone was watching on those security cameras and that person was able to call 911. When officers arrived, they say Thomas saw them and barricaded himself inside. They tried to get him to come out, then went in looking for him. Officers at the scene told us they happened to peek inside a hole in the wall and noticed Thomas stuck in there. Firefighters had to free him so that he could be taken to jail. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Israel continuing its aerial assault on targets in Gaza. The number of Americans killed has now risen to 22. And as for Israel, officials there are saying at least 1,200 people killed inside their borders. And the Palestinian Health Authority says more than 1,000 people killed in their region. ABC's Ines Delicater in Tel Aviv with the latest. Today, a barrage of rockets fired by Hamas militants into southern Israel. Air raid sirens blaring as the normally bustling city of Ashkelon is now essentially a ghost town. And in the Palestinian territories, smoke rising over Gaza City as Israel's military say they've struck more than 200 targets overnight. Releasing video, they say, show Hamas targets at sea being hit. These strikes coming in response to the brutal weekend sneak attack by hundreds of Hamas terrorists inside Israel. The horror unleashed by Hamas now coming into focus as Israel's defense forces report discovering the bodies of murdered children and women. It's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. Deborah and Shlomi Matias killed when Hamas militants broke into their family's kibbutz five days ago. Their 16-year-old son, Rotem, survived. He spoke with ABC's James Longman. The terrorists shot, opened the door, shot, they threw a grenade or something, it exploded. The last thing my dad said is he lost his arm and then my mom died on top of me. Some 360,000 Israeli reservists now preparing to join the fight in what is expected to be a major ground assault on Gaza. Gaza's power authorities saying it has run out of fuel and electricity after a blockade by Israel. Hospitals there are already at full capacity. 21-year-old Islamic University student Tala Imad Herzala sheltering inside her family's home in Gaza. There's no electricity. Uh, there's no food supply. There's no water. Pressure is mounting to get Palestinian civilians evacuated after Israeli forces bombed the border crossing with Egypt. The U.S. says talks of creating safe passage for Gaza residents are taking place with Israel and Egypt. The State Department telling CNN. And our teams in southern Israel reporting that there is no sense of security there with rockets once again being fired into Israel throughout the day. In Tel Aviv, Inez de la Quatera, ABC News. Well, most of us here in San Antonio can only watch with horror at the atrocities unfolding in Israel. One local man headed straight to the front lines. His name is Yev Bar Edin. He landed there on Sunday evening. Case at 12's Daniela Ibarra spoke with his father, who also lives here in the Alamo City. He says his son had no choice but to show his patriotism, and he is ready to fight. He had a very, very strong uh, sense of duty that his place is there to do his part. I am extremely proud of him. I mean, uh, I, I don't know how, how else to describe it. As for the father, he too is headed there. He says it's tough for Ziev's mom and his pregnant wife. They don't know when he'll come home. He's headed there in two weeks on a trip that he planned long ago, and he's just not going to cancel it. Still a lot to talk about on the news at noon. ACT test scores reaching a new low. How many students met benchmarks for success in college level classes? Later in sports, why many people did not expect the Rangers to make it to the next round of the playoffs. But first, a new type of football helmet helping anyone play the game even if they can't hear. All right, a new invention at a university could be a game changer for football players who have difficulty hearing. So the university and AT&T creating the first 5G connected football helmet for those who are deaf and hard of hearing. So the helmet allows coaches 
and the staff members to send plays via a tablet to a digital display located right on the visor. It's mind-blowing um, using this kind of technology, super advanced, um, especially when you're talking about using it in the game of football. So truly blown away, and I can see how it benefits us in a game time situation. So hats off to AT&T for making this happen. All right, so the university says it shouldn't go unnoticed that they invented the modern-day huddle in 1894, a way to conceal hand signals from the another deaf opponent. AT&T, get this, made a half-million-dollar donation to the school. Uh, some new research showing that high school student scores on the ACT College Admission Test have dropped now to their lowest levels in more than 30 years. Nonprofit ACT says scores have been falling for six consecutive years, but the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the drop. The average ACT composite score for U.S. students was 19.5 out of 36. Last year, the average score was 19.8. About 1.4 million students in the U.S. took the ACT this year. Of students who were tested, only 21% met the, met the benchmarks for success in college-level classes in all subjects. All right, you know who someone, someone we know who did very well in their ACT? Miss me in Montgomery. Well, you are really reaching for that one. Yeah, I'm doing what I can. I, I don't know. I She's our local honest, scientist. I, I just can't assume even remember what I got well. on the ACT. Oh. I do remember taking the ACT. Mm, was it well, fun? our local peanut queen. Okay, <laughs> okay. I am sure did well. So she's kind of foreshadowing to some fun events that are happening this weekend. Of course, we're going to be talking about the annular eclipse that is taking place on Saturday. Weather Authority team is going to have several different spots where we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be there live. So excited about it. We'll have more details on that in just a second. Do want to get you a look at the aquifer down a tenth of a foot, 632.6. Pollen count very similar to yesterday. Molds are moderate. Ragweed and fall elm are low. So yes, we'll get you the details and talk about the forecast after the break. All right, Halloween just around the corner. Do you still dress up? Uh, as I'm sitting down, drinking a glass of wine, mm. handing out candy, yes. Okay, okay. So I usually wear like thing. a witch's hat or something. Okay, that's fair. All right, so it is the season for scary movies. You're you never scary too movie old. Person? No. Guys, do you guys yeah. dress up? Mike, Fiona? Totally, I do, every year. I don't as often just because I used to do a lot of elaborate makeup and stuff like that. It's on a weeknight a lot of times, so I, you know. You can't just put something on? I don't, I'd like to do all the, the like makeup a hat and stuff or like that. Mike or only has something. one speed and it's go. <laughs> <laughs> but our question is yes. okay, scary movies and villains, villains and monsters. What's the one villain monster you think you could take in a fight? If it's attacking you, it's like, no, 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 and you're not going to, you know, be Ooh. the victim of it. Quick yeah. answer. Like maybe. These guys, do you think you could take them? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not the clown. Uh, the, cl the clown's yeah. got me. The, the mallet is a, yeah. are allowed weapons here. What's the situation? I'm going to have nightmares just seeing the clown. See, now, in this case, if they're chasing, I just have to make sure I can outrun her, so. <laughs> <laughs> just don't trip and fall, they all seem to You've do. You've heard the saying, uh, I want to be the final girl. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Final I want to be the final girl. But any any one monster you can, you know. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, with Jason. Like Freddy vs. Jason. You could take you on could Jason. Take Jason. In my mind, I could. Awesome. Because I've seen all the movies, and I'm like, there's no way this dude's like. Going to get away with <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. So what about you? <laughs> That's great. Thank you, guys. We'll check in in just a minute. Get the clown out of there. Yeah. No, not a clown. Oh, Chucky. Chucky was an easy answer. Yeah. He's a little doll. He's yeah. a doll. Right? Mia, yeah. what about you? I, hey, I'm with Ursula. Don't do clowns. Okay. It's a little much. So we're just going to keep that one just on the other block, side. I'm going to find a studio. mental block for that yeah. right now. Just going to pretend that that didn't even happen. It does look like they're having a scary good time out there. All right. What's not scary actually is a little bit cooler this lunchtime hour. And yes, we did find some rain for portions of South Central Texas over the past 24 to 36 hours. Here's a look at rainfall totals 
samples that we've gathered from reporting and registered observation stations across the area. Now here officially in San Antonio, at least over at the airport, only three hundredths of an inch. But the sweet spot has really been northern Frio County and southern Medina County. Pearsall just about an inch and a half. There's a rain gauge southwest of Hondo that has 1.28, 0.68 in Divine and Lytle just over four tenths of an inch. So we do love to see the rainfall totals out there, even if it hasn't been for everybody, especially across portions of the hill country. At least we were able to find something out there in area rain gauges. OK, you can see right now, at least for most of us, we are quiet out there, but we do still have a few lingering, very light showers, more so sprinkles, a little bit of drizzle, certainly possible. Northern Lavaca County here near Moulton that does stretch just off to the south near places like Quero, just to the southeast of Smiley. But you can see a lot of this is starting to come to an end, and that's been the general theme, expecting whatever we found out there earlier this morning to taper off especially now that we're heading into the afternoon. Now, something that we were also looking at earlier this morning, visibility, it can help us track if there's a little bit of mist causing those gloomy and dreary conditions out there. Visibility has improved drastically across San Antonio, stretching over to Castroville, Hondo, but San Marcos up I-35 still dealing with a little bit. So something to keep in mind if you are planning on traveling up I-35 in the next couple of hours. But for the most part, yes, we will still find clouds into this afternoon. We will dry things out, but I do think a few breaks in the clouds some peaks of sunshine are expected. And of course, depending on just how quickly we can see more peaks of sunshine, that will ultimately determine just how high temperatures this afternoon are able to climb. So right now we're in the low 70s here in San Antonio. We're going to shoot for a forecast high right around 78 by 4 to 5 o'clock. And then if you're stepping out for any Wednesday evening plans, we'll start to see those thermometers fall into the mid and eventually into the low 70s later on tonight. All right, let's talk high temperatures, especially tomorrow and into Friday because a warming trend is expected. Another little brief taste of summer upper 80s by Thursday near 90 on Friday. But if that's too hot for you, we do have another front that's going to move in right now. It's looking like late Friday afternoon and Friday evening that will send another batch of fall air into the region for this weekend highs in the upper 70s and low 80s. Now tomorrow morning it's possible we find a few patches of fog out there because grounds are somewhat saturated, maybe a stray sprinkle, but into the afternoon we see plenty of sunshine, which is what's going to help those temperatures warm into the upper 80s. Then here comes that front moving in Friday evening, not really expecting any rain, but cooler and drier air will move in as well, just in time for the Ring of Fire annular eclipse happening at about 1152 for us here in San Antonio on Saturday. It is possible that we have to monitor for a few lingering passing clouds, mainly south and west of San Antonio, but overall throughout Saturday morning, we should be clearing things out and it's going to start to feel a whole lot better around here this weekend and even into next week, guys. It already does. Thank you, Mia. Mm -hmm. Coming up in sports, a clean sweep for the Rangers and they're going to the ALCS. There, last, and could it be a Texas-style showdown? How many more games the Astros need to win in order to face off against the Rangers? We're going to break it all down. That's next. Welcome back. An exciting night for baseball. Defending champs, the Houston Astros. Your Houston Astros taking charge of the Minnesota Twins. From their really, first at-bat. Jose Altuve getting a single right off Sonny Gray. I mean, look at that stacked house, and let's just start off hot. Boom! I mean, from start to finish, it really was there. First RBI of the postseason, pitcher Christian Javier threw nine strikeouts, five scoreless innings. Astros win 9-1. to one. They move within one win for a seventh consecutive AL championship appearance. Javier got in some trouble. We had to make a decision on what we're leave him in there or go to somebody else but he he came through the guy you know he can he can smell the victory or he can smell when i'm about to take him out <laughs> and so um that's happened four or five times so um but it was just good to come here and uh and win this game today 
Game four, Target Field today. And if the Twins can force game five, it'll be in Houston on Friday. But speaking of Texas baseball, the brooms are out in Arlington after the Texas Rangers completed their sweep of the one seed Baltimore Orioles, seven to one. Fascinating sequence of events. The Orioles had one of the highest regular season finishes. They had 101 wins while the Rangers fell to a wild card spot on the last day of the regular season. This is the Rangers' first ALCS appearance since 2011. They now wait and see who will win between the Astros or the Twins. And really hoping Astros, Rangers get a little Texas rivalry going. Wow. No. Who would have ever thought that? I mean, it's baseball in Texas. We take it seriously. Uh, I know. Adam Caskey's kind of upset. His mm. twins aren't there. RJ Marquez had a great point earlier. He said, thank goodness for the Rangers because it takes some of the, uh, the negative spotlight off of the Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. <laughs> Wow. Still ahead in the next half hour, this is also awesome. We're three days away hey. from a solar eclipse. Why looking at it though without eye protection could permanently damage your eye. I have the science next. <laughs>